What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. You're joining me in Southeast Florida and we're heading north back to Charlotte, North Carolina. And along the way, we're gonna be stopping at quite a few chargers in the Southeast Florida area and just seeing how they're doing. We're focusing on 100 kilowatt plus. And we're starting at the falls, which is just Southwest of Miami proper. And let's take a look at this Electrify America site. Quick before we jump into this video, did want to mention a new initiative from the out of spec team called Rate Your Charge. Right now it's just a Twitter account at Rate Your Charge, um, but soon it will evolve into many different things. There's actually an episode on the out of spec podcast talking all about it, um, but definitely recommend checking that out. Share your experiences, just post some pictures, uh, short video narrated, tell us what's going on there. Uh, write a little bit of text if you're not comfortable with photos or video, but hopefully at least photos, please. Uh, and then that way we can reshare it and really get some attention and things to all these charging issues, both the good and the bad. We do want to have good experiences as well, though right now we are seeing a lot of poor experiences, especially on the CCS network, but Tesla's not perfect either. So feel free to share any charging experiences you have coast to coast, more, mostly North America at this point but probably expanding to the rest of the world in the future. And let's jump into this video, checking out all the chargers in Southeast Florida. So as I mentioned, we're at a mall, outlet mall thing called the Falls, which is just Southwest of Miami proper. Here we have the power cabinets. This is a Signet site. We have the transformer over here. And over here we have the four stall installation. Uh, this one that I'm parked at right here is actually indicating that it has reduced power. Let me just show you that just like that. I haven't plugged in yet to see if that's actually the case. We do have a Polestar 2 charging. We've got an ID4 charging and that number four is actually indicating that it's unavailable. But let me get this one activated. We'll try it, see how reduced the power is uh, and go from there. So we're now charging. Let's see what kind of speeds we're getting. And we're getting a whopping 23 kilowatts. <sighs> Pretty terrible actually and it doesn't seem to be ramping up. So I'm gonna call that a total fail. Uh, at least it's indicated as reduced power, but that is just downright unacceptable reduced power. Um, wow, really terrible. So checked on this ID4 here on number three. So we're getting 26 kilowatts, actually swapped cables. It was getting that for about full hour and that's just really bad. So both cables are having that issue. That's usually due to the thermistors in the cables themselves. Uh, this Polestar getting 33 kilowatt hour over 66 minutes. That's also really terrible. And yeah, 23 kilowatts here in five minutes. So downright terrible. This entire site is essentially useless. And next up, we're off to Dadeland Mall. About 10 minutes away, hopefully slightly better. We'll see, I guess. But this only has three chargers. Let's see if it wants to actually let me navigate there. There we go. So let's head that way. Gonna check in on PlugShare before I leave because in case you didn't know, PlugShare scores only impact the site if you're there. And guys, you're now joining me at Dadeland Mall. I don't see a sign anywhere here for me to show you, but man, look at all this electrical equipment here. Um, but it's outside the Nordstrom's. I was actually impressed with the Rivian Nav. It took me right to the actual charging location. And this site is not in good shape. Here's charger number one. CCS is unavailable. The Chatamo is apparently available, so I guess there's that. Uh, not useful to me. Here we have a very nice looking Tycon, um, but done charging. They charge to 99%. They've been idling for four minutes. Looks like it did charge them fairly normally, 42 minutes to get 64 kilowatt hour. That's not terrible. Beautiful Tycon though. And we've got a plug-in hybrid X3 here pulling in that they can't charge here because it's that only does level two. And here we have uh, number three completely unavailable, but it does have the new stickers. So in summary, I can't charge here at all and we're gonna head on off to the next one. I can't even try to charge here. And I did check in on plug share accordingly. Dropped it from a 10, which I don't know how this site has a 10 to I believe it was 4.2 which is what it should be because it does have one functioning port, kind of. 
Oh, now the uh, X3 is now backing in or just turning around. I don't really know. They can't charge here. I don't know what they're doing. All right, so the next one that would make sense would be Miami International Mall, but I actually went there the other night, so I'm not going to go there again. Only one of four or one of three was functioning there, which is uh, not great. Now let's head up to silly thing. Let's see which one that is. I need to see which one of these has new stations because I know one of these does. Um, we'll head to this one next. About Twenty-six minutes see how it goes there and then we'll probably head there 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 maybe i don't know we'll see which ones i'm probably not gonna hit all of them but try to hit as many as possible well we've arrived to walmart 4303 is the name of the site this site actually has older btc hardware we've got ev6 charging there at about 96 percent. we have a mach e and we actually have an eqs suv uh here we have my rivian as you can see, older BTC hardware. So these are actually 350 amp max on the 150 kilowatt. Let's see if we have any 350 kilowatts. We actually don't have any 350 kilowatt units here. But we're going to plug in here in just a moment and see how well it charges. So this Maki -E here charging on number four is uh, only getting 31 kilowatts. So that's a faulty cable there this ev6 let's see so they got they averaged about uh less than 60 kilowatt going from 20 to 96 percent that's pretty terrible let's see what we're getting here it's still initializing charging give it a moment here and then we'll see uh if we charge so it looks like we actually got a fault on number one here it dispenser intermittent safety error never seen that one before uh, so I guess I'll move over and see if we can get anything on number three there. I actually moved over to number five so I can try both five and six here and see how it goes. Looks like this left cable on number five is new. Well, it looks like we're maxing out at 97 kilowatts on number five, cable two. So that's not good. So I'm going to swap cables here and see how that goes. I did talk to the EQS SUV driver. He was leaving kind of as I started filming. He said he got full power on that one. I'm not 100% sure how much I believe that. Um, looks like we might be charging here. Let's see, we're on number five. I heard contactors clicking. Not available current charge speed. Okay, there we go. Let's see what we get. This is the one that looks brand new, so I am hopeful but it's currently showing zero still. There we go, 98. Let's look in the truck, that should be faster. Uh, nope, looks like 98 is all she wrote for this dispenser. That's unfortunate. So maybe limited to 250 amps, I think that makes sense. Let's swap over to number six here. It's good news. We're charging at 150 kilowatt. Cannot complain about that. EB6 just left, so I'm gonna try number two and number three here, another Mach-E just rolled up, so give them the good news that that one's working without issue. We'll try a uh, good cable here first. Let's see how that goes. We've got another uh, EB6 rolling up right now. So just discovered that uh, number two here that the EB6 was on is actually on complimentary session. So I just activated uh, number three here. We'll see how that goes. Um, like I said, I'm on the newer cable. Another EV6 just rolled up. Let's see. No account found. Alrighty then, that's interesting. So number three here, only given about 151 kilowatt, um, but this EV6 just tested this one out. It was only given about 60 kilowatt. And, but I'm gonna let him take the spot. I'm gonna stop charging and continue on. Next one we're headed to is Walmart 3235 North Miami. And then we're gonna be continuing to head uh, north here. We're at Walmart 3235. We have a level two station with just an utter mess of a cord. Faded screen shows is available, but it is literally held together with electrical tape. So that's uh, fun. 
I'm charging here on unit number one. This e-tron was unable to charge on this unit, but I was able to, so not sure what's going on there. We're maxing at 100 kilowatts, so I'm actually going to stop that there. I don't need to charge. This i4 was charging here and blocking the station. Luckily, the e-tron was able to move over there, uh, getting 146 kilowatts. So that's totally normal for the e-tron. And there was a Polestar here that was unable to charge, but it does show as available. So not 100% sure what to make of that, but overall seems not great here, I would say. Time to head to this one here in Hollywood. And this is an Electrify, or sorry, this is an EVgo. And this one, I'm not gonna stop at this visit, but if you haven't already, check out the vlog I did with the Out of Spec crew. Um, from a couple days ago. That site's a bit of a mess, um, but EVgo is working on it. Um, but yeah, five of the six units there are offline or limited power, which is not great. But just so you're not thinking that I'm calling out Electrify America specifically, did want to mention that EVgo site and that it's kind of a mess. So let's continue on to this one, 20 minutes away. Um, and then we're probably just going to stop at one or two more and call it a day because I do want to make some headway on heading north to Charlotte today, try and get uh, somewhere north. Well, we're at Walmart 3163 in Hollywood, Florida, and this unit is down, number four here. Completely dead screen, nada. Number three, again, completely just dead screen, nothing at all. We have a Polestar charging on the only functioning unit and it's getting a whopping 50 kilowatts. Should be getting better than that. And on number one here, again, completely dead. This is absolutely ridiculous. Next up, we're headed to Davy. According to PlugShare, only one's working, so this should be pretty interesting. We're at the Target in Davy, Florida. Electrify America site here. Here we have a level two. This shows as in use currently on the Electrify America app. It's clearly not. We have cool e-transit here charging up. This gentleman was actually at the last site that I was at and could not charge there, came here. He was very frustrated with the overall charging experience, but he's getting charging as expected here, about 81 kilowatts at 43%. E-transit doesn't charge that well, so that's actually normal. Um, I'm charging here on number two. We're getting 161 kilowatt at 57%. That is perfectly normal. I'm actually going to stop that there because I don't need to charge a ton and I want to have my battery not fully charged. And here we have charger number one, completely unavailable. I don't know why I can't seem to find a single site with every charger working. All right, so we're headed out to Broward Mall in Plantation. And then we'll head over to this one here and then we're gonna head north, but I think I'm gonna end the video once we leave this one. That's actually a brand new BTC install and I wanna start heading north. Well guys, we're at the seventh station that I visited today alone and I think I'm witnessing a miracle. All six stations are in use. I snooped a little bit on all six of the charging units and all six of them are working as they seem to be uh, intended to be used. They're delivering full power. Um, number four, I believe that is, is on complimentary mode, but it's delivering full power and there's really nothing to complain about. Here we have Ionic 5, probably the fastest charging vehicle here, getting 153 kilowatt. We've got Polestar 2, but we're now actually full. There's a ID4 rolling up. So I'm going to move and leave and then things are looking good here. Happy to report that all are working well. ID4 is backing in there and next up we're off to, what's the name of this one? Walmart 2946 in Fort Lauderdale. This site actually has brand new BTC hardware. So curious to see how that is going. Then we're gonna head to an FPL site and I think that will probably be all. So we're at Walmart 2946 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We have a Tycon charging here. This is 3B and it's a balanced charger. They're getting 80 kilowatts at 82%. That sounds pretty normal to me. Not super familiar with Tycon charging curve, but that seems reasonable. 
This is 3A, so I'll have to move over here to try this one out. It appears to be available. That's a Tycon 4S. I just plugged in over here. This is 2A. And you can actually see on this one, Charger 4, but 2B as far as cabinet goes. It's only getting five kilowatts at 62% in a lucid air. And they've been charging for 43 minutes, getting 34 kilowatt hours. That's really terrible. So let's see what I'm doing on 2A, because in theory, if there's an issue on that one, it should be here, but getting 132 kilowatts. So that's actually, that, that sounds about normal for the state of charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that to see so that I can move over and still have a fairly dead battery. So that seems to be behaving normally. And then I'm gonna move over to test out these two. Already tested out the ABB, tested out that one. Need to test out that one as well. But it actually seems that those two are mislabeled. So this one is labeled as balance, as you can maybe see there. But this one is not labeled as balanced. But when both of us were plugged in, because these are 1A and 1B, it actually reduced power for both of us and it was well below 350 kilowatts total so very strange and these are the ital design btc units here rather than the signets that we've seen typically and i have tested all but one unit at this entire site i've moved my truck three times now um ignore my terrible parking job i was actually able to test five different units from this one position parking like this and i'm not exactly blocking anyone so i don't have any shame with that um, but all of these work. The only things I've found that are a little bit weird, this one is not labeled as balanced. However, that is 1B, this is 1A, and when both of us were plugged in, it actually reduced power on them. And on all of these signs, going all the way down the row here, they had the Florida State Statute for EV Parking only on this side. And then on this side, for some reason, they have the California state statute for EV charging, parking, and being able to tow. So technically on half of these spots, they couldn't be towed away because they have the wrong law quoted. Very strange, but happy to report that all of them are working. Uh, and I just wish that these were pull through. There's no reason for these bollards in the middle. Uh, just make it so that you can pull all the way through and everyone will be happier. But very glad that every station is working. And these are actually the BTC Ital Design units. And I don't think the cold weather issues that Kyle reported will be a problem in Florida because it doesn't get below zero here or there are much bigger problems going on. Next up, we're headed to this Pompano Operations Center. It's actually a service plaza, but it's actually an FPL charging station. Uh, and that will get us farther north and get us out of greater Miami area, hopefully as traffic is building up to avoid some of that. But I wanna try and get Somewhere north, I need to figure out a hotel for tonight. Not really sure what my plan is, but we'll figure it out as we go. Hey guys, we're off of 66 at the Pompano Service Plaza. Show you where we are. So we're near Pompano Beach, off of 66 here. And we're at a Florida Power & Light Evolution charging station with Power Electronics charging hardware. We have 200 amp air-cooled cables here. These are 250 amp rated dispensers as you can see right there dc power up to 200 kilowatt but you need very high voltage for that and here we have the power cabinet so there's four of these and there's four dispensers you can see here they're 120 kilowatt cabinets i'm not entirely sure if they can combine the power from these two cabinets into a single stall uh, if someone knows definitely let me know but output rated current here is 125 or 150 amp and max power output is 100 kilowatt or 120 kilowatt and we do have one stall down here unfortunately so this is actually the accessible stall with the aisle here and then the at grade entrance just completely dead it is marked on the app as down as well i'm charging we're getting let's see how much power getting 82 kilowatt at 76%. So I think that's just the internal charge curve. Totally normal there. It's 30 cents a kilowatt hour, pretty reasonable. But the real thing here is we're right next to a version three supercharger with eight stalls. And this just works flawlessly every time and delivers 700 plus amps, but very nice location. I uh, haven't gone inside yet, but I would imagine it has all the things you would want as a traveling driver 
restrooms, food, snacks. We've got Dunkin' Donuts, Wendy's, Pizza Hut, and a Main Street Market. So overall, I'd say probably like a six out of 10 rating here. Well, late night editing this video and realized I never recorded an outro for this. I just jumped right into the return trip all the way back to Charlotte. So definitely, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Want to know what your thoughts are on just the state of charging in the U.S. If this is your experience, did you travel at all over the holiday season? Did you experience similar things? Did you experience different things? Uh, I know things were probably pretty great for Tesla drivers, but not so much for CCS drivers, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, if you haven't already, check out at Rate Your Charge on Twitter. Uh, it's a new thing that Kyle started I'm helping out a little bit with. Um, basically just putting some of these charge point operators a bit on blast, bringing a lot of attention to all these issues that are facing the industry uh, and truly impacting the road trip and just overall driver experiences for CCS vehicles. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.